Bayless from LA. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. Now, how are you doing today? That, that is how you ruin a championship ring celebration oh. night. That's how you do it. Beautiful. Poop that party. <laughs> Spoil it. Yes. Nothing can ruin Thank that you. moment. Yeah, did you did you see how big those rings were? Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, they're yes, almost as I big did. as five cases of Diet Mountain Dew. Okay. They're, they're this big. <laughs> well, Cause that's what you lost to me last I'm night. I'm gonna get it, baby. Well, oh. Take it out that fifty you owe me. The nectar of the gods. Oh. The yeah. breakfast of champions. Your day Diet coming. Mountain you see how you laughing now? See you keep kiki kiki over there? Your day coming. <laughs> Here we go. Last year, same thing. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, those rings were special. I yes. love the family involvement. But yes. yes, I have to admit, the Clippers, they did spoil opening night with LeBron and the Lakers because they received their championship rings and they had that moment. But it was Paul George who led the game in scoring with 33 points while LeBron and Anthony Davis combined for only 40. The Clippers led by as many as 22 while the Lakers never had the lead once. Uh, Shannon, what was the biggest reason the Lakers lost this game? Well, first, I would like to congratulate the Clippers on being two-time opening night champs. <laughs> that is a huge accomplishment. You should feel very proud of yourselves. Mm -hmm. And congratulations again mm -hmm. from all the Laker fans and Laker Nation across the world. Mm -hmm. Well, Skip, the reason why they lost the ball is that the Lakers lost the game, excuse me. Mm -hmm. The Lakers did not shoot the ball particularly well, particularly well, and I'm being kind. They shot the ball awful. And even as bad as a start as they got off to, Skip, mm. for the majority of the third quarter, they were one, two points down. And then over the last five minutes, they go one for 10. Yep. Paul George catch fire, and then they were never, never able to get back into the ball game. Mm. Paul George was spectacular last night. The Lakers, you know, and you can tell, the Lakers got a ways to go with conditioning in order to be the team that they want to be and where they were last year. Mm. LeBron James is not going to play heavy minutes. We saw that last night. The fewest minutes he's ever played in a season opener, yep. 28 minutes. And you saw, Skip, when he went to the bench, it's like, I was thinking to myself, I don't think LeBron. He, he was walking like, I ain't coming back. Mm. <laughs> That's that. I ain't coming back in here, uh, walk. Mm. But give the Clippers credit. Uh, Paul George got going, and then there was no answer for that. Mm. Um, if one of our guys could have got going, maybe we could have offset, you know, you know, go back and forth. Kawhi shot the ball. I mean, look, I'm thinking about building a house because I heard there was a brick shortage. Mm. I know who's been hoarding them. Mm. Kawhi. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's okay to have 26 mm. points, but you can't take 26 shots to get those 26 points. Mm. Skip Bayless. But Paul George was the difference. The Lakers did not shoot the ball well. Mark Gasol's got to stay out of trouble. Anthony Davis got to shoot more. Kyle Kuzma's got to slow it down, and mm. we're still integrating people, Skip. You, you, and they did it. Mm. Dennis Schroeder started at the point. LeBron started off the ball. So we're going to see how this plays out over the next month. But that's why they lost. But it's okay. And plus, our arms are hurting. Man, we got five pounds of gold on our arm. Mm. You saw that, Skip? That thing's so big. Mm. But that's okay. Your day. I know you over there kiki key, keying key, key inside. You love it. We ruined it. We ruined it. But your day coming, Skip Bayless. Over. I remember I told you. Remember the save the date. Mm. Your day coming. Mm. My turn. The reason I am kiki key, key, keying over here <laughs> is that I laughed and laughed and laughed all through the the last five minutes of the third quarter and much of the fourth quarter because of the irony of what was happening. <laughs> Your biggest target during last year's playoffs, the man at whom you leveled the most scathing criticism, you called him Playoff P, that was his nickname for himself, <laughs> except you put two E's on the P. <laughs> he was Playoff P-E-E. -E. Okay. And I don't disagree with your assessment of him because he was, he was a basket case in the bubble, mm -hmm. but you were, you were all over him for days on end. Mm -hmm. You've been all over him through the off season. And that man, and that man alone came back to haunt you last you night. And that man, PG-13, <laughs> cost you five cases of Diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> it began and it ended with PG-13. Yep. And I will be the first to admit that I was about to go play off PEE. -E, with 131 left in the first quarter, after a tour de force first quarter by my Clippers, they punished you. 
They were up 22 at one point late in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. it, it was everybody, all hands on deck, everybody clicking at the highest level. It was a beautiful thing to watch for me. And it looked like and smelled like it was going to be a halftime blowout of Clippers over Lakers. And Paul George had had a short rest and hadn't done much yet in the game. And he came back into the game and was 131 left in the first quarter. Could we please see what PG-13 did? This was bubblicious. This was like last year's bubble. He threw it to the referee in the corner. And then he blamed Luke Kennard. Like, well, what are you doing? You're supposed well, to be you're in the corner, You're supposed to Luke. be there. Well, what are you doing? And I thought, uh-oh, here we go again. And it became a microcosm of what happened against Denver last year when my Clippers were up, as you know, in three closeout games, 15 points and 19 points and 12 points. And it felt like that was happening all over again because from that point on, they finished the first quarter with a Luke Kennard turnover and a Lou Williams turnover, didn't make another shot. Mm -hmm. And then they, they missed 12 of their first 13 shots to start the second quarter. Is right. that good? No, that'll get you beaten. Mm -hmm. You know, again, it was a home game for the Lakers, although they share staples. <laughs> right. Nobody was there, mostly except the basketball players. Right. And yet, your team didn't play great in the second quarter, but sort of woke up and said, well, wait a second. If they don't want it, maybe we should right. take it, right. right? Yep. And here they came, and they cut the deficit from 22 all the way down to two going into halftime. Yep. And what was Shannon Sharp thinking up in his pleasure I'll state good. up like, in yep. Bel Air? Yep. We got this. Yep. <laughs> and I seriously at halftime thought you got this. I thought you might win this by 15 because you had seized momentum and you had made the Clippers doubt themselves again. And obviously they spent an entire shortened off season doubting themselves mm -hmm. over why did that happen and how do we fix it? Well, did they go out and get playoff Rondo to be their point guard? They did not. But I was very intrigued by what Kawhi Leonard said after the game last night. We just kept running our offense. And that's what we took pride in tonight. Everybody had each other's back and everybody was staying positive. That was a statement aimed at your newest Laker, Montrez Williams, um, Harold. Williams Harold, sorry, who obviously became the malcontent in the locker room, and you can say they demonized him for all their problems. They and did. And shipped him on his way mm -hmm. because they did not want to resign him, and it shocked him, but it surprised the Lakers. Lakers jumped on the situation. Oh, we'll take him. Right. And to his credit, he, he gave you 17 and 10. He gave you a lot of energy, a lot of emotion yep. last night, but it wasn't impactful. Your newest addition, also Schroeder, gave you like a near triple double, but he shot five of 15 from the field and it didn't feel that impactful no. to me. I, I didn't remember it as, oh wow, he, he took right. the game over. But the point was something happened in the halftime locker room with the new Clippers. Something was, was changed from last year because they did not fold. And all of a sudden- they Skip, but they were folding. The only difference was is that the difference between last year and the th last three games and last night is that Paul George made shots. Okay, well that's that. That's the only. He difference. was the one who folded first last yeah, year. Yeah, but they don't have anything well, to do. What with was he saying? I, in the bubble, he was lost. He right. needed counseling in right. the bubble, right? right? Yeah. He he was feeling anxiety mm -hmm. and depression in the bubble, yeah. as many were. Right. And yet he was the one who fell apart the 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 quickest and the most against right. Denver. Mm -hmm. And then last night, he scores 50. <laughs>